Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So in this video, we're gonna start imagining something. So picture this, you created this amazing laser application. It can count, it can fetch fake data, but you can't monetize it. There is no way for you to get paid. This is where this video comes in and saves the day. We're gonna use Stripe to, to get payments. Uh, just quick disclaimer, as developers, we usually use Blazor because we don't like using JavaScript. Uh, there's gonna be some JavaScript in this video since uh, we have to play nice with Stripe, but don't worry, I have the script and it's all in the GitHub down below, so make sure to check that out. Other than that, let's just get started. First thing we created is our payment page. So I just went ahead and here in pages and created a, a, a payment page.razor and a payment page.razor.cs. So in the payment page, it's pretty simple. We are just gonna do it slash pay so people can go there. And we're gonna inherit our base class that I'll cover in a second. And then it's just like a heading saying, uh, give me the money and then the Stripe component that we're gonna be using. That is something that I created right here. You can see the components, I'll cover that in a second as well. So then this one is very simple at first. Uh, it just has the Stripe component that we created and a Stripe billing request. This one is some model I just created to be able to send stuff to, to the server. So basically we'll have the billing name, billing email, uh, payment method ID, which is what Stripe gives you. Then price ID, I'm not going to cover that in this video, so make sure to subscribe. And next week I'll cover about the server side of things. This video is only client side. So then after that, we're just initializing the billing information. And then we have the placeholder for sending stuff to the server, but we're not sending anything right now. Then we have the Stripe component. So here it's also kind of simple. I just have two input texts, one for the cardholder name and one for their email. And then this is the card element. So basically this one has to have the ID of card element because that's what the JavaScript is gonna look for. And then here I just did some styling so it looks the same as the other ones. But this style is not really necessary. It's just my ugly way of making it look nice. And then it has an element errors ID that basically it's where uh, Stripe will post any errors. So basically TLDR copy this to have your card element and modify the style to make it look the same as your application. Then I have a button that it's for paying and it'll send you to the process pay. So straightforward, all this is just basic Blazor UI, so I'm not really gonna cover this. Here's where it gets interesting. So first of all, this is not a component base as how we usually do it. This one is the a partial class so we're actually extending the, the regular component and we're gonna have a javascript runtime so we can call javascript we're passing down billing information and here we call it with sub request but it's basically the billing information that we're getting from the payment page and then we have a callback this is for whenever the payment is processed so basically we have to wait for stripe to process the payment information make sure that the current card is valid and then it gives us back a payment ID. So we send it to the server and we actually never touch the, the credit card number. It's all dealt by Stripe. And then we have a bool for first time because only the first time that you render the page, you wanna actually create the card. This was my easy way of fixing it. And there's probably a better way of doing it. But basically when I initialize the page, I, I make it uh, true. And then on after render, I, I just, invoke the initialize from the JavaScript that I'll cover in a second that will basically create the card element. So let's jump into it and, and see how the initiator works and then we'll keep jumping back and forth between the JavaScript and this page since they're joined at the hip. So first we start with some initializ initializations of global variables as in here you can see the card and all that stuff. And in the Stripe we call the window of Stripe and we add the public key that you get from your Stripe account. That one you have to go into your Stripe account and actually get it. I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but basically you just go to Stripe, create your account, and then it'll say test public key and just copy and paste it here. And then we set the elements to the stripe.elements. Here we're just doing some styling for the valid and invalid that makes it green and red. And here's initiate. This is a function that we just called. So basically you'll start the card and it'll create the card. So you'll see when we actually do it, it'll kind of like pop up a little card icon and like it'll show the card number and CVV and like zip code and all that stuff. And here it just mounts it to the element. So that's why it's important that it's called card element on our ID. And then on change, you'll check for display error 
which basically it's this one that will just display an error if there's an error with a card if you enter an invalid number or something like that. So then let's jump back to the next function. So then we have the process payment. So once they enter the information and everything, they click the button here that says pay and it will send you to process payment. And this one basically will just create the payment method in the JavaScript, which this goes and sends the information to scratch Stripe. It's very important. All the payment information goes to Stripe. It doesn't go to our servers. So it makes it kind of like Stripe's responsibility and you don't have to deal with the whole credit card thing. We add the create payment method and we're calling the create payment method server that we're passing the .NET helper, the billing email and the billing name. And this one just calls the top one with the card and all the other global stuff. And in here, we're just calling stripe.createPayment method. So basically this just sends it to Stripe. And then if there's an error, it displays the error. If there is no error, it calls the create subscription from the .NET helper and passes the payment method ID. So what that does is it basically lets know the C sharp code that they're done processing the payment method and that they got a payment method ID. And as you can see here, it sends it here, it sends a payment method ID, and then we send it back to the parent page that the payment process has been processed. And then that's when we would call the server and do all that that we're gonna cover in the next video. So make sure to like and subscribe. All right, so the last thing we have to do after that is just go to the index and we have to add this script source that basically is the one that calls the whole Stripe thing and like calls the Stripe server and all that stuff. That's why it was able to reference all the Stripe stuff in our Stripe script. And then this Stripe script.js, which is the same Stripe script.js that I created and added to the www root. So after that, you should be able to collect credit card information. And then in the next video, we'll do actual charging on the server side. All right, so we just have to go to slash pay. And here you can see, so this is the card element mounting as, as you saw, like the credit card appeared and it says credit card number and everything. So in here you just have to enter your, your full name. And then an email. And then in here you enter a credit card. Um, the test credit card number for the Stripe test endpoint is 42, 42, 42 all the way. And as you can see now it shows us a visa and then you just enter any month and then any zip and it'll put it as valid. And then when we click pay, I put an uh, breakpoint in the send to server in the page, just so we can see the, the billing information. So in here, you'll see that we have the coding flamingo at gmail.com. We have the billing name, we have the payment method. So we're going to use that to whenever we're charging them in the server side, we tell Stripe charge this credit card and Stripe will verify that that's a credit card they created and they'll add it. Price right now is null because we're not actually sending how much we're charging. I'll cover that in the video that I do the server side. And that's how you add Stripe payments to Blazor. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.